Praise the Lord. Retin Knucklehead here, a.k.a. Brother Everly Jr. And we can turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And that's Luke chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little of stature. He ran before and climbed up a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said unto him, Zacchaeus, Make haste, and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste, and came down, and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was gone to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, to the admission, to the application, to the distribution of this great word taken from the greatest book that man could ever possess. And my brothers and sisters, this is God's word. And we give God the glory, honor, and praise in the precious name of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior, and to come the King. Amen. The, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. The narrative begins where Jesus has entered into Jericho and is going through. A gentleman by the name of Zacchaeus takes notice of this. He's made aware that Jesus is coming by. Zacchaeus is a chief publican. He's very rich. He There's a crowd. He's not able to see Jesus from that point with the crowd. And so he runs ahead of the crowd where Jesus is making a procession. And he climbs up a sycamore tree so that he could get a vantage point so that he could see Jesus. As Jesus is proceeding, we pick it up in Luke chapter 19, verse 5. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and he saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus. He calls Zacchaeus. See, for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which is lost. Salvation is personal. He calls him by name. He calls him Zacchaeus. Salvation is personal. You know, he calls him by name. He's, it's not the crowd, but he, he, he's, he's, he, he's looking. He sees Zacchaeus individualizing him and, and, and calling him by name because salvation is personal. This is the same Jesus Christ who had one occasion, he said, of the good shepherd, of a, of, a, of a shepherd. He says that he will leave the 99 to go after that one. It's personal, individualized, out of the crowd. He leaves the 99 to go after the one. And then calling his name, Zacchaeus, making it personal, making salvation personal. He just goes on to say, make haste for today. You know, during Jesus' ministry, he was never, you know, rushed. He was never hurried. He was never pressed. He was never, you know, trying to make a schedule, if you will. He, was, he would minister to great multitudes, you know, feeding the, the multitudes, healing the sick, raising the dead. There was one occasion where he, he's gone to the, there's a religious leader by the name of Jairus comes worshiping and says, please, my daughter's near death, come and, and heal her. Jesus then comes, you know, follows Jairus. Then there's an interruption as a lady that um, grabs on to Jesus' garment and then Jesus is ministering to her and and never a sense of like in a hurried or oppressed in terms of just healing, raising the dead, cleansing the lepers, never in a rush. But when it comes to salvation, when it comes to for the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost, we notice now there's a turn. And, and you, you don't see this in 
any any of the uh, the four gospels, only in this one where he says, "Make haste for today." See, for salvation is 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 it's it's of importance. It's of urgency. It's pressing. Salvation, make haste for today. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, it says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. And so when Jesus who, who calls out Zacchaeus, because salvation is personal, when Jesus says, make haste for today, because salvation is, is of urgency, it's, it's pressing, he calls out Zacchaeus. Salvation for the Son of Man has come to seek to save that which was lost. And it, it notice he says, and come down. Come down because Zacchaeus was on top of a tree. Come down because salvation is positional. You know, in the previous chapter, Luke chapter 18, um, Luke records where Jesus is going through Jericho and he comes by a certain blind man. And he's seated and he's begging. The blind man is made aware that Jesus is there. And he starts calling, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. The crowd tells him to be quiet, be quiet. In Mark's account of this, of Luke chapter 18 with the blind man, in Mark chapter 10, Mark goes into some details with this. He tells us that this blind man is called Bartimaeus. He's begging calls out for the Lord, says, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on us. They tell him to be quiet. And then when Jesus says, no, let him come to me, they say, rise, because he was in his seated position. Rise. The the master would have, you know, and, you know, the master wants to, would want you. Rise. So he was seated, Bartimaeus, and he rose. Zacchaeus was up in the tree and he came down. So salvation is positional so that we're on equal, on an equal plane. You know, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 4, it says, Every valley shall be exalted. Bartimaeus, rise. The master will be worthy. And every mountain and every hill shall be made low. Zacchaeus, come down to salvation so that we're an equal level, equal footing, because salvation is position. Notice what Jesus also says. He says, I must abide. I must abide. You know, in Luke chapter 13, Jesus is at a synagogue and he, he takes notice that there's a woman that is have uh, that, that the mentions that she has a a spirit of infirmity she's she had it for 18 years she she's bowed she's bowed down and she could in no wise lift herself up um, Jesus takes notice of this and and then tells her you know to come some is delayed to come and then Jesus says woman thou art loosed of thy infirmity and the, the, and then they started to glorify God, but the religious leaders of that time they they took um they took indignation to God to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for doing it, and they were saying like, oh, you know, aren't there six days and on, on one day of the Sabbath, are oh, not this woman to to be healed on the six days and not on the Sabbath, and and Jesus calling out this hypocrisy, and in Luke chapter thirteen he says. In, Verse 15, he says, Lord, and answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, who Satan hath bound low these eight years, be loose from the bond on the Sabbath? You you would you would loosen you would work on on a Sabbath to, so that you could you know feed your 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 animals your beast but this woman for eighteen years being bonded by Satan and you want to do that for her you hypocrite ought not she be 
healed on the Sabbath. Calling out this and and, and the same way with 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 I must have I I ought. This is because salvation is a priority. I must abide. I must abide with you, Zacchaeus. Just the same way as the, the woman who was bound with a spirit of infirmity for 18 years when she was bowed and in no wise could lift herself up. She, the same way, ought not she be healed on the Sabbath? I must abide. But salvation is a priority. It's personal. He calls out by name, Zacchaeus. It's pressing. It's an important issue. He says, make haste for today. Behold, now today is the day of salvation. It's positional. He, he came down from the tree to be Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus rose up. In the same position so that we're equal footing. Must abide. It's, it's a priority. The woman that was 18 years, it was a must, ought not she be healed on the Sabbath? Must I must abide. It's a priority salvation. And notice, Jesus goes on to say, at thy house. See, salvation is, is a time of it, it's 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 a it's a social occasion. It's it's pleasurable. It's patient, it's it, it's it's pleasurable. It's pleasant. You know, and, and, he, and, and Jesus wants to come at your house. You know, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Behold, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man hears my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will sup with him and he with me. Salvation is pleasurable. It's pleasant. Because Jesus is... Amnable. He's lovable. He's, he's likable. He's social. And he comes. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And he has that pleasant attribute of salvation. Because salvation is personal. He calls him by name, Zacchaeus. Salvation is, 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 is of importance, it's pressing, it's make haste for today. Salvation is positional, come down, rise up, be at that equal position, equal place, equal footing. It's of a priority, I must abide, and that's at your house. If any man, if I knock, any man hear my voice and open the door, I will sup with him and he with me. And so, verse 6 of, chap of Luke chapter 19, we see that, that, G uh, that Zacchaeus responds, and he made haste. For today, behold, now is an accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. He came down. He, he came down in that, the position of salvation. He came down. And he received him joyfully. Verse 7. And when they saw it. And this is the religious leaders. They all murmured saying that he was going to be the guest with the man that is a sinner. The same way that the religious leaders when something glorious. Where the woman was healed from a spirit of infirmity in 18 years. And they, the religious leaders were so blind that they couldn't see something glorious. That they complain and say, oh, not have done it to six days and not to seven. And we see the same thing going on. Something glorious, a, a sinner, you know, being received, coming, making haste and, and, and coming down and receiving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is salvation. Verse 8, and Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, behold. Now, this is what happens after he's made haste, came down, received him joyfully. And he said, Behold, Lord, I the half of my goods I give to the poor. So now he's, he wants to bless people, this enemy of the people, this 
this trade of the people, this this, this man who, who's a chief among the publican who was rich, now he wants to give to the poor. And if any, if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, being a government official, being in extortion and double dealing and, and mis, 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 misguided like, briberies and all kinds of scams and, and shortchanging the people. He said, if by any, if any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. So not only is he going to pay back the principal that he that that he took back, he, he illegally took from these people. He's not going to give them the principal, but he is giving them extremely above more than the interest rate, so that they're going to end up better off than they were before. They're going to have more than they ever had before. They're going to be restored fourfold. So when we see, and then Jesus says, this day of salvation comes to this house. For as much as ye are also a son of Abraham. And, and everybody wins. Zacchaeus is saved. He giving half. Half his goods to the poor. They're getting blessed. Anybody that he robbed, they end off better off than they did before they dealt with him. Because he's Restoring them fourfold. You know, in Luke chapter 18, um, Jesus meets up with another rich person and comes up to him in Luke chapter 18. He says, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And then Jesus basically tells him, you know, to keep the law. Then he goes on to say that I've been doing this since my youth up. Oh. And it's interesting in Mark chapter 10 of this same account with this rich young ruler, when he gives that response, Mark mentions that and Jesus loved him. And and then when you know when Jesus heard, he said Jesus heard him. He loved him, even though he lied to him, but he loved him. And he says, "All right, there's one thing that thou lackest." But if you sell your all that you have, if you give all that you have to the poor, and you'll store riches in heaven, and come follow me. Next thing he said, when he heard that, when he heard what Jesus said, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. We saw when Jesus was ministering in Luke chapter 19 to, to Zacchaeus, the first thing that he did, he gave half to his poor. But this man who, who, who was trusting in his riches, saying, I've kept the commandments since my youth up. And Jesus gives him and says, you, there's one thing that you lack, but if you give all to the poor, you'll have riches in heaven. Come follow me. He couldn't do that. He couldn't give it up. Zacchaeus gladly gave it up. So he gave half his goods to the poor, and, and even anybody that he robbed, which was everybody, he gave them fourfold, paid them what he robbed from them, and then gave them fourfold interest. The rich young ruler was very rich, but he couldn't give up, and he was, and he was very sorrowful, and he left. You know, during that time, it was uh, the mindset is when you were rich, you were you were thought as as godly, thought as being saved because you were rich. They measured, they were materialistic. Uh, they measured your salvation based on, you know, the, the income that you had. And so, Jesus goes on to say, you know, hardly can a man enter into heaven who trusts in their riches, for it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter, who, a rich man who you trust in his riches to enter into heaven. And so when the disciples hear this, they're like, well then, who can be saved? Jesus said, the things which are impossible for men are possible with God. See, salvation is impossible for men on their own. 
but salvation is possible with God. So on one hand, in Luke after 18, the man, he had his money, but he went away sorrowful. The, the, the disciples were beside themselves. They were wondering who could be saved. But when we look at Luke 19, the rich man in that account, he gave, he freely gave where the rich man in Luke 18 couldn't. It was sorrowful. He gave and he was, he gave and he was happy. He was even told, Lord, I'll give my, half my riches, half my goods to the poor. And anybody that I, that I falsely uh, robbed, I'll give them fourfold. And so everybody in Luke 19 is happy. This salvation has come to this house. For as much as he is also a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Because salvation is personal. He knows your name. Salvation is, is an important, pressing issue. Salvation is positional. You come down, rise up to be on equal plane. Salvation is of a priority. I must abide here. This woman ought not this woman be healed. On the Sabbath. Salvation. It's, it's, it's pleasurable. It's pleasant. It's a peace of mind. Salvation is of the Lord. It's available. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. <laughs> May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his conscience to you. May the Lord give you his peace. And I commend you all to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up in inheritance to those who are sanctified in the precious and powerful and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now to him that is able to keep you from falling, present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, both glory, dominion, majesty, power, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. <laughs> Agape love.